الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا عصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصلي عليه ما ريسبكتد ايلدرز برادرز اند سيسترز اند ليسنرز اوف راديو دون السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته can i just request the brothers in the hall to please sit together in a nice lines rather than those brothers in the back please sit in the lines front lines please and when the khatib is giving the khutbah which i am doing now you know you are expected to listen not to pray your nafils please look is something that we are always in search of and it's an elusive entity but nevertheless we are always searching for luck we want to be lucky and you perhaps seen the english people when you know when they want to say you know i'm going to be lucky they'll they'll say i'll knock on the wood or knock on the door or knock on the table okay touch the wood they normally say touch the wood okay and they think by saying that they will have they will get luck and the idea is that there was they believe that there was a god of trees and by obviously touching the wood or anything which is made of trees in other words a table you are getting the help of these gods of trees okay or god of trees and so and that is in very enlightened times okay these are supposed to be scientific people rational people logical people but still relying on superstitions to give them luck there are all sorts of weird ways you know in which to get the luck okay but really we are told again and again that look when somebody asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is this luck business what is this kismat and naseeb he said it's your good character and when somebody asked him what are bad omens what is bad luck and misfortune he said when your character is bad that is when you will have bad luck what does it mean that you will have bad luck when your character is bad? meaning you are the architect of your own luck you make your own fortune because luck really is you know by definition something that happens by chance and it is beyond your control and we are told that you know nothing in this universe happens just by itself by chance all right that is not our view certainly and neither of the scientists or people who have reason there is always a cause of some effect if you want to have an effect there has to be a cause behind it okay so this whole idea of you know uh, getting luck just like that there is no way that you can get luck like that and the quran talks it says wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr by time man is indeed in loss man is loser man is a loser the quran says man is loser he loses okay every moment that passes and every minute that passes he's actually losing you know if he had let's say if he had a life of 80 years okay every day that passes every week that passes every month and year that passes it's getting shorter and shorter isn't it therefore he is in inevitably he is in loss wal asr in al insana lafi khusr man is a loser however you know the quran says 
you can conquer this state of loss and of losing by being spiritual. And we'll talk about that, inshallah. That is what I want to talk about. How do you make your luck really come to its fruition? How can you become really lucky? A few weeks ago, I, I was talking about some of the principles of success. And in that, we mentioned that the first thing you have to do if you want to succeed is to set very clear goals for yourself, targets that this is what I have to achieve. Please sit down and listen to the khutbah, please. You'll have plenty of time to pray at home or later on. So sit down and listen to the khutbah. The first thing is to set those right goals. This is what I want to achieve. You know, that is the first step you have to take if you want to succeed. The next is actually preparation for that. Okay? And that is where you know, good families and good parenting comes in. We prepare our children for that great goal of success, really. Throughout this life, we are preparing them. And of course, we're preparing ourselves in all of that. The third important thing is actually to implement and to do the effort, make the effort to realize that preparation and all that preparation we have done, now practice it. And that is really the jihad of life, okay? That is the constant struggle of life. However, we have to put our reliance and trust in God. We can't put it down to our intelligence and our preparation and our experience and our strength. We can't rely on that. At the end, we have to then put it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the maker and the creator of everything. Now, this tawakkul, you know, as explained by the Prophet ﷺ, doesn't mean that we blindly, okay, say that, well, Allah will take care of it. That is not tawakkul really. Tawakkul is, we, we do those preparations, we make those jihad and effort, and then we say, well, the result will be determined by Allah. That is what tawakkul means. That the result is going to be, the outcome is going to be really affected by who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the cause of all things. That is what it means really. That because Allah is the cause of all things, we put our trust in Allah. I want to talk about three other very important principles of success uh, this week. And first of them is the fact that, you know, we have to, let me just remind myself what that fifth one is. It's, again, it's something very linked to this idea of luck. And this is about seizing opportunities. Okay? And this is what makes really the successful people successful. They seize opportunities. Whilst the unlucky people, the failures, don't seize opportunities. And one of the reasons they don't seize opportunities is they actually don't see them. They're blind. They actually don't see the opportunities. And Professor Wiseman, who did a lot of research on luck, uh, did this experiment with lucky and unlucky people. And it was an interesting experiment. He gave them a newspaper to look through. And the task was, count how many photographs this newspaper has. And on page two, in a very clear, bold letters, it said, this newspaper has 43 photographs in it. So what do you think the lucky people did? Well, the lucky people didn't go very far. They just shut it, and in seconds, well, this is what it says, and that's what must be true. The unlucky people didn't actually notice that, and they went through it, and they took minutes, you know, counting every one. And to add to this, Professor Wiseman put another little uh, box in which it said that, uh, tell the researcher, uh, if you tell the researcher, you will win 150 pounds. If you tell the researcher that you've read this little box, you will win 150 pounds. Many of them actually didn't notice that as well, the unlucky ones. So the conclusion was that the problem with the unlucky people is what? Either their eyesight is weak, or that they're always looking for the wrong things, okay? They're not really looking for what they should be looking for. And I think that is the, the crux of the matter. And I say, I'm, I'm not here to teach you how to you know, be successful in your business and all that. You all are wonderful at that. From this, the principle is about succeeding in our lives. And for Muslims, 
for me and you, the real success is when we can stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and receive our kitabul a'mal, the book of, of our deeds in our right hand, okay? When our face will be glowing, when we will be standing below the throne of God under the shade of Arshullah, okay? That really will be the real success, okay? And that is the success that, you know, I want you to understand and myself to understand that we've got to seize opportunities to do righteousness. You know, many of us are not able to do a lot of good things because we don't see them. You know, we say, what can I do? Well, I've, I've never heard many people say that, sadly, but in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, we do see the Sahaba coming to the Prophet ﷺ and asking him, tell us what is the best deed? What is the most noble deed? What is the best way of you know, doing good things, okay? What is the best thing in Islam? What is it that will please Allah? You know, those are constant sort of themes and, 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 and uh, topics that the Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ about because they were keen to learn how to do righteousness and goodness. Today, sadly, you know, we're not really bothered, to be honest, and that is why we don't see those opportunities to do righteousness and goodness. And when we grow old, and we, when we are perhaps 80 or 85 year old, and we're perhaps disabled, and we can't do much, uh, and we've got a lot of money stashed away, then, you know, we'll be worrying, okay? We will be worrying, you know. What have we done, okay? Why, and why haven't we done any good? We, we, we can't think of any good, and we're going to leave all this money behind in hands of children, possibly, who are not aligned with my own philosophy of life anyway, okay? And it's not going to really benefit me in the Akhirah as well. And that is why, you know, we need to be thinking now, you know, what am I planning to do good for the pleasure of God, for the good of humanity, and good, you know, that will really benefit me in every way, really, because good benefits us. So, seizing opportunities. There's a whole topic in my favorite book, Riyadh Salihin, where the Prophet ﷺ talks about the kathratu turuk al khair, the many, the numerous ways of doing righteousness. Okay, meaning that you know you should seize every opportunity, every mo every time that something comes for you to do, which is good, don't lose it, Jana. So seizing opportunity to do righteousness and goodness is one of the great principles of success. And just like in worldly affairs, you know, it, it happens similarly, in, we should apply that in our deen as well. And the sixth very important uh, principle of success is again having high expectations. Now, you know, the Quran tells us, uh, Every coming moment of your life is going to be better. And God will give you so much that you will be indeed pleased. Now that is Allah's promise, okay? That, and we too, you know, should have these high expectations of our lives, not low expectations. You know, we should say that I am going to get first class, okay? I am going to pass with flying colors. I'm going to set myself this high target. I'm going to achieve it, okay? This is what I want. And this is called self-fulfilling uh, prophecy, and it's a fantastic theory, you know, the psychologists agree that, you know, when you set yourself very high expectations, what happens? You inevitably rise and rise, okay? You indeed are what, you, what expectations you have of yourself. You know, if you regard yourself as a lowly person, as a miskeen, you become a miskeen, okay? If you think, I am destitute and poor and rotten and miserable, what happens? Just try it. Just try it for a, for a half a day. Eh? Try to imagine, you know, you are a miserable, wretched person. Just see for what happens for half a day. You will really become that wretched, miserable person. Okay? But as soon as you begin to think otherwise, you know, about how joyful life is, look at what God has blessed us with. Eh? Look, look, at, look at the blessings of God. What a beautiful creation of God is all around us. Eh? The blue sky, the beautiful greenery around me, the fantastic natural sceneries around me, and wonderful people around me, and the blessings that God has given me. Look at me. Uh, your perspective will change enormously, brothers. 
And that just shows you, you know, the power of our brains, you know, how we can actually make ourselves or we can break ourselves, really. And, you know, this is, you know, we are ourselves, the makers and breakers of our hopes and our destiny, really. And that is what, you know, our dean teaches us. The seventh very important principle is resilience. Now, resilience means being able to, for, being able to bear the difficulties of life and trials and tribulations and take them in one's stride and regard them as, you know, means of actually rising higher and higher. You know, the trials and tests and the problems we face, you know, difficulties we face, you know, we don't, you know, scum to them. We don't sink to them. Instead, we rise above them, okay? We regard these as the dross that comes from, you know, when you melt the gold. All the dross, all the contamination, all the metals that are, shouldn't be in that gold melt away the dross, the froth, the waste, okay? And we should say, well, this is, or, you know, as mentioned in one of the hadiths, that, you know, these trials and tests are sometimes like God whipping us, eh? You know, just like we whip the horse to make it move faster or you press your accelerator to move your car faster and faster. You know, Allah is, in a way, whipping us. This is one of the metaphors used in the hadith that Allah is whipping you to come on, get on with it. You've got so much capability. You've got so much strength. Get on with it. Walas, Allah says, Inna insana lafi khusr. By time, man is indeed in loss. You know, and the only way we can overcome that loss is really one. Not in our material and worldly ways. You can't, okay? Because every minute you lose, you know, you are losing. You are not a winner. In, in a material sense, you cannot be a winner. There is only one way of winning time, and that is through our spirituality, really. By earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by earning the sawab, the credits that will matter in the hereafter really. That is the only way. By time, man is indeed in loss. Except him who believes and does righteous deeds. Okay? So here lies, you know, the real solution to our, you know, question. How do we overcome this loss? The only way we can do it is by having that strong faith accompanied by good deeds and then searching constantly for the truth. You know, is about searching for truth and, 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 and being patient, okay? Being able to resist, you know, the temptations and being able to overcome the difficulties, you know, and that is what really makes us truly successful. I've talked about these seven principles of success. Inshallah, you can read more about them on our uh, website, creamia.com. But really, as I said, you know, we need to apply these. They apply to our worldly life, but more so, you know, we should think about applying them to our spiritual lives as well. Lives that will really make us truly successful in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of what is true success and keep us away from you know, the ephemeral, the fleeting, the transitory success that we associate, you know, uh, with success, because that really is not the absolute success. The absolute success is when we are in the company of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when we feel the presence of Allah all around us, okay, and when we aim higher than just these material and worldly gains, when our aim is higher, really, let us aim higher, brothers and sisters. Wa akhru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi, wa rabbil alameen.